Football season is officially over. What are we supposed to do now? Watch Sports Scene, of course. We've got the latest updates on USC basketball, volleyball, and more. Sports Scene starts right now. Welcome to the luxurious Annenberg Media Center. I'm Jackson Saffold. And I'm Josh Cohen. You know, Jackson, USC basketball continues to get buckets. The Trojans remained perfect at home by dismantling UCLA on Thursday night by a score of 80 to 61. With that dub, the Trojans moved to 18 and 5 on the season and 7 and 3 in conference. The Trojans remain in second place in the Pac-12 behind Oregon with the Ducks taking care of business, business as well. USC has a big weekend coming up as they travel to take on the two Arizona schools. Yesterday, the newest AP and coaches polls ranked USC at 23, up four spots from the week prior. USC can continue to climb up the ranks with a win over number 17 Arizona this weekend. Arizona is third in the Pac-12 with a 7-4 conference record. Last time these two teams met, USC came up with a huge four overtime victory at the Galen Center. The Wildcats are led by a pair of seniors in Ryan Anderson and Gabe York, followed by super freshman Alonzo Trier. Together, the three combined for 54% of the team's total points. And you know, USC is not the only team with a strong home field advantage. The Trojans know they are in for a tough test when they go to Tucson on Sunday. Well, especially at Arizona, I think they've lost one game at Arizona in the past, like, in, I think in the past like four or five years. So that that'll be really difficult. Um, we just we have to come come out strong. Julian was a little off there as Arizona has four home losses over the past two and a half seasons, but even in a slightly down year for the Wildcats, Sunday's game is sure to be a battle. USC's dynamic offense will need to be even more efficient than normal if they want to come up with a huge road victory. The USC basketball team has been nothing short of explosive on offense this year. I'm now joined by Max Goldwasser to break down why the Trojans have been so productive. Max, thanks for being here. Thanks, happy to be here. Let's take a look at a few plays from last Thursday's win over UCLA. We start out with a little pick and roll action. Max, how does USC run this kind of play so effectively? Well, the way USC has been very effective running the pick and roll is that the pick itself is set so high. And when that happens, it's going to give so much opportunities after the roll happens. In this play, specifically, Ivanovich was able to cut to the middle while the rest of USC's offense was spread out, leading to an easy deuce. So now let's break it down a little bit. Uh, we see the pick, like I said, very high pick up here, and you're going to see uh, Jordan McLaughlin roll to the right, and most of the other USC guys are going to kind of stay around the perimeter. He's there, he's there, Boat Wright is going to kind of stay where he is. We'll see in the next one, uh, Yovanovich is already cutting to the basket. McLaughlin's drawing his guy. A lot of people are going to be helping on McLaughlin. Jacobs is open in the right if he wanted. King Reinhardt's open here, but everyone notices that because USC is so spread out, which is going to leave Yovanovich wide open in the middle. And you'll see it here. Yovanovich catches the ball behind the entire defense already. Everyone is already out here concerned about the people, the USC people, all around the perimeter. So that's how Yovanovich was able to score easy on that play. And we'll watch it one more time uh, just to watch it. Uh, and it, it's important that USC, even the players that aren't getting the ball, are still moving so that they still cause a distraction and draw some attention. It's really pretty play, easy finish for Jovanovic there in the paint. On to the next play now, slightly di different execution off the screen here. What does Julian Jacobs do on this play that works so well? Uh, Julian Jacobs was able to do a hesitation cut, which is very key because he was able to distract his defender, let his defender kind of get his attention onto Jovanovic who was cutting in the middle. Jacobs kind of slips away and is able to get wide open. So we'll see kind of the same start again. Looks pretty identical. Jovanovic shedding the pick up here. Jordan McLaughlin's going to roll, and everyone's kind of set up, like I said, in the same place, around the perimeter. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of throw off the D. They're maybe probably going to expect Yovanovich to roll to the middle, which he does. So all the defenders are still, because they know what just happened, Yovanovich caught the ball in the middle. So all the defenders are going to make sure that they have their attention on Yovanovich. But what this guy's going to forget over here is that he's guarding Julian Jacobs, who at this point is going to be wide open if he slips to Yovanovich, which he does. You'll see McLaughlin already has the ball up, oh, already has the ball in flight on the way to Julian Jacobs, while all the other defenders are kind of collapsed on Yovanovich in the middle, which is going to leave Jacobs up in for a while. You'll, and you'll see here, look at all the space he already has while the shot is even up in the air. 
That's right, Jacobs with the splash there mm -hmm. after a nice hesitation move. Finally, we have the Trojans on the fast break. Max, I want to ask you, what makes this team so dangerous in transition? Well, the thing that I notice is any missed shot, it doesn't even have to be a turnover. Any missed shot can be turned into a fast break. USC's very fast getting out and making sure their players are down the court, especially the big men. You'll see there, Yovanovich is the one who's down the floor kind of first, and he's getting the transition bucket. So we'll see it here. Uh, Chmezi Metu with the block. Yovanovich is on the floor. He's on the floor in the beginning of the play, so it's kind of interesting to trace where he goes throughout. Uh, so we're going to keep moving here, and Yovanovich already up in this one. He's going to be one of the first guys down the floor. You saw Julian Jacobs over here, so even when the block happened, all the USC players collapsed so that they could get back down on the other end. Everyone's kind of running, and when you get a big guy down the floor like Yovanovich before the big guys on UCLA, it's going to create some open spaces, and there's going to be some mismatches, and when you get that, He's going to cut here, and you'll see all the defenders collapse. Jovanovic, same kind of thing. Didn't even have to do a pick and roll this time, but just because he got fast down there on a fast break, he's going to be wide open here for a dunk. Let's take one more look at this here. Live, nice block by Chmezi. Yes, and you'll see all the USC players are kind of sprinting back down. It was just a missed shot, but it doesn't matter. Missed shots, they turn into open opportunities. The big man flew down the floor. You love to see it. Love to see it. It's going to be big against the Arizona school. Yeah, we're going to need it with Caleb Tarzuski. They have they have some good height there, so I think USC's pace will need to stay in check. Yovanovich establishing himself in the paint. Love to see it. USC's offense has been silky smooth this season. The team is second in the conference in scoring, while Jacobs and McLaughlin continue to rack up the assists. Well. That's all the time Max and I have for our hoops breakdown as the Trojans look to continue their offensive efficiency on the road against the Arizona schools. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Ruben. USC's offense was obviously humming against UCLA. I welcome in special guest Connor McGlynn to help me bring you the best of the best. Good to be right back here with you, Jackson. USC moved up four spots in the AP poll this week, so why not highlight the best four plays that got them there? First off, number four, what's that off in the distance? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Get my no, it's Super back. Metu. Chemezi Metu with a Bill Russell-esque block in the second half of the game. He directs to teammate Julian Jacobs, who takes it the length of the floor with ease, snakes around some couple defenders, and finds Nikola Jovanovic for an easy layup. What a play by Chemezi Metu. Number three here, rewinding a bit in the first half. McLaughlin with the steal in transition, feeds it up top. Julian Jacobs with the one-hand tomahawk in traffic look at this again McLaughlin backpedaling there Jacobs taking maybe like 10 steps but he still gets the belt Jacobs finished the game with a game high 17. Hey Connor do you by chance uh, have 10 cents don't worry because I got a dime for you right here Ooh. Jordan McLaughlin with the scoop pass to Benny Buckets and he knocks it down let's look at that one more time my favorite part of this play is after the unreal mid-air pass by Jordan McLaughlin he doesn't even look at the basket. He just knows Benny Buckets' his cash from that range. Bottoms up. I like that little Cal Nigel reverse, reverse type stuff. Late here in the first half, Aaron Holiday tries to oop it to himself. That won't do it. McLaughlin with the steal. This one's a real oop to oh Elijah my Stewart. He can finish it off with the two-hand slam. Stewart finished this one and a bunch of others. Finished his night with 16. That's all we got from you. Those are the four best plays from the game against UCLA. Now let's talk over to, toss it over to Jacqueline for a look into social media. Thanks, Jackson. The USC men's basketball team is off to its best start in more than 20 years. Before Thursday's matchup against Crosstown rival UCLA, Trojan basketball had won 13 consecutive home games to start the season. Thursday's battle of Los Angeles at the Galen Center had every member of the Trojan family active on social media. Leading up to the game, there was a lot of traffic on Twitter surrounding the blackout. Fans were encouraged to wear black to the game, and students were even given a free t-shirt upon entering the arena. Before the matchup, USC Hoops tweeted at fans, quote, Game day instructions. Wear black, get loud, beat the Bruins. Hashtag, it takes a team. Hashtag, fight on. Trojan fans did not disappoint. The student section was packed and filled up a full 90 minutes before tip-off. It was USC's first sellout since 2011, and over 10,000 attended to watch this anticipated rivalry. Football coach Clay Helton showed his support at the game and tweeted afterwards, quote, Congrats to Coach Enfield and USC Hoops on a great win tonight. Awesome job by our students making Galen electric. USC fans made sure to remind everyone of the Trojans' football victory against UCLA this past fall. USC Galen Central tweeted, quote, 
just like football chants at Galen Center as USC is coasting to a football basketball sweep over UCLA. While most of the noise and energy came from the student section, Trojan alumni, faculty, and family all showed up to support the Cardinal in gold. US, even USC President Max Nikias took to Instagram to congratulate the team. He posted this group picture captioning locker room celebration after tonight's convincing USC 80, US, UCLA 61 hoops victory. Always sweet when we beat the Bruins. Also, still undefeated at home with a 14-0 record. As you can see from Twitter and Instagram, Thursday's game was one for the books. Trojan fans are excited to see what comes next for the men's basketball team. And that's all for social media this week. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jacqueline. The USC men's volleyball team is off to a rough start at 218 on the season, but they did get a win on Saturday against UC San Diego. I'm here with Jody Storm Sullivan to break down what exactly has gone wrong for the Trojans so far this season. Thanks for coming, Jody. Of course. Obviously, it's been a rough start for this the Trojans so far this year. But what specifically sticks out to you from a team perspective? Well, specifically on a team perspective, uh, USC's out opponents have been outpacing them in a lot of the key stat categories. Offensively, opponents have been out killing per set, 13.1 uh, to 11.4 kills per set. Um, and then on that same offensive frame and attacking percentage, opponents have a 0.321 attacking percentage to USC's 0.217. And having that offensively slow, being offensively outplayed by their opponents, it causes them to be unable to um, string points at the end of sets and win those sets and eventually win those matches. Yeah, it really seems that the Trojans have gotten to 20, 21 points, but they haven't really been able to get over the edge, get to 25, and win those matches late in games. And while their offense has really struggled, their defense is really lacking as well. Tell me about that. Yeah, well, defensively, um, standing at the net, opponents are outblocking USC tremendously. On the season, their opponents have 125 blocks to USC's 66. That's a huge deficit for the Trojans. Uh, one caveat to that, though, USC's leading blocker from last season, who's now a junior, middle blocker Andy Benish, was out for the first five matches of the season, so they really lost his defensive presence up at the net, but now that he's come back, he's been playing, he's moved up to second in the team in Kill. so they are kind of starting to rebound defensively, but still their opponents are just out blocking them tremendously. Well, USC obviously started slow with their key middle blocker missing. They started 0-6 in the season before going 2-2 two two over their last four. So obviously they're starting to pick it up a little bit on the defensive end, but it's still not where they want to be. What about behind the service line? Well, from behind the service line, opponents have been out acing USC 57-38. to Head coach Jeff Nygaard has talked about how he wants the team to be more aggressive, to really go at it, and to be mindful of the game from behind the service line. And numbers don't lie, they're currently being out aced, so that's something that the Trojans can do to really improve their game. Well, obviously, as a whole, they've really been struggling this season. But what players have been important for USC so far this year? Taking a look at players, you have sophomore opposite John Rivera, who's currently leading the team with 108 kills. And it's a bit of a breakout season for him. Coach Nygaard talked about how he's really grown into a player and he's really reliable to have as a strong opposite. And in the MPSF, to have a strong opposite, that's huge for a team. And taking a look over, you have senior outside hitter Alex Slot. He's second on the team with 89 kills. Um, as a captain, his leadership and consisting attacking from that outside position has really helped keep the Trojans in set, not necessarily closing those sets, but he's given the team a boost and he's keeping that offensive level of play strong. Well, obviously with two of these guys as seniors, they really expect it to be good this season where the team hasn't been as strong. So tell me about Tommy Leonard. Tommy Leonard, you have a senior middle blocker. He uh, currently is leading the team with 32 blocks. And he, that's a bit of a broke, breakout season for him. He's been a backup in the past, his poor, previous three years, putting in all the work. And he's finally come into a starting role and really helping the Trojans kind of fill in that hole in the middle blocker. Now you have him, you have Benish in the middle, and that position's really starting to develop and to be strong for the Trojans. Well, that's all for our closer look into the struggles of men's volleyball. But be sure to catch the Trojans take on Cal State Northridge tomorrow at the Galen Center at 8 p.m. Now let's send it over to Alexa to take a look at some other USC sports. The gorgeous weather this week has been a treat for fans by the pool and the court. And the teams, well, they haven't been doing too bad either. In fact, we have a lot of winners to share. It's time to light the torch. First up, we're taking it to the pool where the USC men's swimming team upset the number two ranked California Bears by a single point. The great day of competition came down to the final 25 yards as freshman Kyle Grissom brought in the win as the anchor of the 200 yard free re relay. This is Troy's first win over the Bears since 2000, and Coach Dave Salo talks about what it took to pull this upset. We've been struggling for 10 years since I've been here trying to beat Cal. Uh, our team was ready, they, they're motivated and they're driven. Um, so we're, I'm just so proud of the guys. It was just, it was a struggle all the way through. Uh, the divers did a 
outstanding job of really kind of padding the points because uh, the divers from Cal were just not as strong as ours. Uh, but I'm just really proud of the outcome. It's a great job by the kids. Next, the Trojans take on Utah in Salt Lake City on February 20th. Over on the course, the USC women's golf team continues to lead the pack at the end of the second round of the Northrop Grumman Regional Challenge. The Trojans remain close to a title run as they go into their third day of competition. And on the tennis court, the Trojans went undefeated in their double header against Grand Canyon and Loyola Marymount on Saturday. USC's entire 11-man roster competed throughout the day to bring in two 6-1 victories. Sophomore David Laser shares how the team plans to keep their momentum going. Yeah, it's super important to keep the strong start going. Um, you know, we have a really young team this year, but we're dangerous. We have a lot of hungry guys, a lot of guys that are fighting for spots. Next matchup, I think after this is indoors, so we'll prepare hard all week and then go off to Virginia and try to get some good wins over there. The Trojans play in the National Team Indoor Championship on Friday in Charlottesville, Virginia. And finally, we're taking it back to the pool where the women's water polo team served up a 17-4 win in its season opener against UC San Diego. Junior Stefania Haralabidis knows how important it is to kick off the season on the right foot. Well, the truth is I was nervous because I haven't, we haven't played for the first semester. But now after we played this game, we're confident and we're excited for the rest of the season. That's all I have from the wonderful world of Trojan sports this week. The torch has been lit. Now let's toss it back to our anchors. Thanks, Alexa. Big news came out of Heritage Hall this weekend. In a letter to alumni on Friday, USC President Max Nikias announced athletic director Pat Hayden will retire on June 30th. And although he chose to retire himself, Hayden will continue to oversee the upcoming renovations to the Coliseum for one year after he steps down as AD. In the letter, Nikias praised Hayden for the job he did throughout his tenure, dealing with sanctions from the moment he took over the job. In his letter, Nikias said, quote, Hayden has pursued long-term goals without sacrificing the near-term goals of the Trojans being as competitive as possible in every area. He integrated the athletic department more completely into the larger university life than ever before. Hayden took over as USC's AD in August 2010 when he replaced Mike Garrett. Hayden began a mild rebuilding process at USC and helped guide Trojan athletics to 10 national championships. Although he has taken some heat over his tenure for his hires of Lane Kiffin and Steve Sarkeesian, his hire of basketball coach Andy Enfield seems to be paying dividends. Additionally, Hayden established both women's lacrosse and women's hand volleyball programs at USC, the latter of which won a national championship last season. The next big decision for President Nikias will be who to hire as a replacement for Pat Hayden. Expectations will be high as the football team looks to return to the top and faces a tough challenge with Alabama as their season opener. But let's move on to the saddest news of the weekend. Peyton Manning and the Broncos won the Super Bowl. And even though former Trojan and Kurt Panther Ryan Khalil lost on Sunday, it was still a great game. With a lot to digest, we have a couple of our likes and dislikes from the big game. That's right, Jackson. I got to start with uh, one of my likes, which was the Papa John's guy making an appearance. My, my guy, Papa John, one of the first guys to talk to Peyton after the game. Yeah, he came in out of nowhere, just sort of zipped in there, got yeah. the quick kiss in the cheek from Peyton, and then zipped back out. Absolutely. Great form by Papa John. Yeah, he's probably got 4'8 speed in there, to be honest. Absolutely. One of my likes, personally, was Jonathan Stewart's touchdown celebration. He threw, threw a little bit of a variation in there and just, just hit it hard. Oh, you know I what liked saying. it. Yeah, Daddy it was cake. fire. One thing I disliked, though, was the end of the first Doritos commercial. It started out strong, obviously. I mean, with the Dorito and the baby, and the baby was moving all towards the Dorito. But then, why did it need to end like that? It was just such a bizarre finish to an otherwise great ad. Doritos, normally I like your ads, and I do like your food. That was disappointing. Yeah, that, that took a little plot twist, but so, too, did the lack of dabs by Cam Newton. Now, I am being coerced to do the dab, dab on, on camera. Uh-huh. But uh, we've seen Cam with that ear-to-ear -ear smile all season long doing the dab. Yeah, and we it was just tough to see him so see bummed out, in especially as a guy rooting for Cam and rooting against Peyton Manning. It was definitely tough to see, but absolutely. Well, that's all we have for our show today. Tune in next week as we talk about women's lacrosse kicking off their season and basketball's big game against Arizona. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at SportsCeneUSC, like us on Facebook, and check out the new website, uscannenbergmedia.com. We'll see you next week.